able to do that. And uh, I'll ask you, please, to put your questions in the chat box. I will be keeping an eye on that while Norm is presenting, and then we'll take the questions up at the end of the session. So to get started, where do you find the documents if you need help? And uh, first, you will go to the district website. I'm going to reinforce, if you're doing a district <laughs> grant, you use the district website. If you're doing a global grant, you'll use the RI, Rotary International website, okay? So district grant we're discussing today, sign in to rotary7080.org uh, and uh, hover over the committees tab. And when you hover over that, you'll get a drop down list. And you're going to click on the foundation tab. When you go there, it gets you to the landing page. You will go to documents and resources, click on that, and it will bring you to foundation documents page. If you scroll down on that page, it will give you all sorts of resource material <laughs> that is going to help you. The uh, information on global grants, on the foundation itself, on about the qualification. So if you're not sure about what needs to happen to qualify, you can go here and find out. And uh, of course, today we're talking district grants. You can see there's loads of uh, information there from uh, Ingram has been working on that recently. We will continue to work on it. But basically everything you need to know about district grants is in here and Norm will show you in practical terms how you go through this. A couple of the pieces that are on there new how to access the district grant module and or your district grant application. So there's a, a document on that. How to apply for a district grant. There's a document on that. So Norm, I'm gonna hand it over to you now to go over um, uh, applications and uh, reports and I will stop screen share. Okay, just give me a minute to open up uh, Google. And I'll go right to uh, screen sharing. We still attempt to just give me a second here. I've got to squeeze this down a bit. Okay, there we go. And we'll share this one. And you should now see my Google page. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I have a direct link to district. And I'll go into the member login pair, uh, section. This is going to take about 20 minutes or less, by the way. And then we can get on with it, have some questions and get on with their day. And we'll go to the member area. And select grants. Got two things here that you'll see. Submit a grant request and my club grants. You will not see the district grants. That's the one that uh, we use to see all the applications at any time. So we'll start with submitting a grant request. I'm not actually gonna fill these in and submit it because when I do that, every time something happens on this site regarding your grant, anything is submitted or a question is asked, uh, there is an email uh, that goes out to the Grants Review Committee, to Leslie, to me, to Aldo, and in certain cases to the uh, district governor as well. Uh, project name, a simple, and you'll see it when I go to the next page, because I've actually put in a sample uh, application and report, and it's actually uh, based on a project that I did about 20 years ago before we even had the current uh, district grant uh, system. It was part of a much larger grant in Maji Chai and Arusha, Tanzania. 
and uh, it was, uh, I broke out the particular part that I'm going to use as an example and called it a, uh, a district grant. Uh, so a simple but descriptive name. The year, this sentence here, please select the year this project will be completed, is incorrect. But we can't edit this particular page. We have requested uh, Club Runner to make a change, but if you'll notice above in the instructions and uh, that Ingrid, who uh, looks after this uh, part of the uh, application, has emphasized the word, the year that it is submitted. And, and that is for consistency. So we use the year that you put in your application for both district grants and uh, and global grants. In fact, if you try to do it for the following year, it's going to tell you this. No qualified clubs found, no club members with, uh, with access have been found. So we'll go back and put it in for that year. Uh, sponsoring club, this is my club, my name. The country is not Canada. The country is where you're doing the project. And if you're doing it in Canada, then it is Canada and Ontario and, the, and uh, Orangeville or Brampton or wherever. But in this case, the country is Tanzania. The province is going to be Maru and uh, the city is going to be Maji Chai. Uh, here, a brief description. You'll get a place where you can put in a much uh, more detailed description. In fact, you have to put in a much more detailed description. Uh, later on, but here a couple of sentences, one sentence, two sentences, and you'll see it on the, uh, the next page. And your estimated budget. The estimated budget we're going to use for this one is uh, $15,000. Uh, and you'll insert uh, other parts of that, uh, the grant request, for example, later, and hit the submit button. And once you do that, that's the last time you'll see this page, uh, unless you're putting in for a second grant. Uh, so from there on in, you go to my club grants. And as I said, it's in the year that you're submitting it. So that's this rotary year for the projects that you'll do sometime after July 1st, probably after August 1st, depending on when we get uh, full approval to go ahead. So this is my uh, example, Maji Yachai, lactose-free milk. And so that's what I say, a simple title, but something that describes that we can quickly look at and see what it is you're, you're doing. So we'll open up that. I mentioned the instructions at the, uh, the top of the page. Uh, take a look at them before you complete each section. They will tell you exactly what goes in that uh, particular section. So what I put on the first page is automatically populated here. And the simple description at this point, to start production of lactose-free milk for a population with a high percentage of lactose intolerance. That's all we need right now. You'll get uh, a chance to put in more later. Uh, you notice the update tab. In some cases, when you're entering things, you'll have a text box and you'll have a save tab. It's uh, very important to Click those before you go to another tab, because if you don't, you lose all your work. And I found out the hard way a couple of days ago. Uh, I was filling out uh, the report at the end of the project, and I went back, clicked the tab to go back and find some previous information just to cross check. And when I went back to the report section, I had lost 30 minutes of work. So, and you can click it as you're working, just like if you're doing a document on Word or something in uh, Excel, every once in a while you click save or your machine automatically saves. In here, it will not automatically save. So you click the update and nothing's changed because I didn't change anything. But uh, if you have changed anything, it will update it. And this, by the way, is the details tab. There's a number of tabs, and we're going to go through every one of these tabs across here, some a little longer than the others. Uh, if you have any partners, list them. 
The first one is partners rotary clubs within our district. And the second one is all other partners. Uh, in this case, Bolton is in, they're putting in a thousand dollars. They don't have to, that could be zero. Uh, for example, you may have uh, a project that requires a bunch of hands-on bodies on the ground. And uh, so the, the fellow Rotary Club agrees to join you with planting the trees or filling the food baskets or whatever, but list them in there. Uh, the money, by the way, when the grant is uh, reimbursed to you, will go back to the sponsoring club and it will be up to them to distribute any import, any portion to a, a cooperating club. And in this case, the Rotary Club of uh, Maru is uh, another uh, Rotary Club that's going to help us on the ground in Maji Chai. It is not necessary to have an international partner for a district grant, but it certainly helps. And having a Rotary Club is good. If not, uh, I know clubs that have done uh, projects with uh, NGOs or schools or churches or food banks uh, as uh, their partner that's uh, handling the money. Here, uh, if you're doing the project in our district, then there wouldn't normally be uh, anybody down there as far as a club, but there might be uh, an NGO. Application tab. This is the big one at the beginning. General description. This is your chance to explain in detail. And you can print out the entire application, not here. I'll show you where later. Uh, but this is where you, you tell a little bit of a story. What's the uh, problem you're trying to deal with? Uh, what is the history of this particular thing? And what's your intent? And here it's intent to create the capacity to add lactase enzyme to the milk from the dairy herd. Uh, I mentioned again, the save tab and the update tab. If I was to click edit here, I would get a box. If I change anything in here, I hit the save tab. Because if I don't, it's gone forever. The community assessment tab. Uh, just like a global grant, they decide what they need. If, uh, for those of you who have been around for a while, probably nobody as long as me, uh, you probably remember a time when Rotary tended to tell people what they needed and then give it to them. That's not the case. And there needs to be involvement of the people, in this case, the village elders, the mayor, et cetera, uh, to come up with the solution for the problem that they have. Sustainability is not required. Unlike a global grant where sustainability is a very important part of it, uh, this is a smaller amount of money. It can be a one-off, uh, for example, a food bank item or uh, something like that, if you're not going to continue to do it. Uh, but if there is an ongoing uh, benefit, please list it here. And in this case, there's some uh, employment opportunities and sellers and distributors, et cetera. Cooperating organizations, uh, if you just read the notes and just uh, list the beneficiaries, uh, I'm sorry, do not include the beneficiaries, just live, list who's going to help you with this project, paid and unpaid. In this case, the Rotary Club of Maru uh, is going to monitor the implementation and the University of Arusha uh, Agriculture Faculty is going to uh, provide some free training. The implementation, read the warning. Do not start your project when you receive notification from the district that uh, your application has been approved. You will be told very clearly in that letter, do not start. We do not want to, uh, you do not want to start any part of the project until we get final approval from the Rotary Foundation and tell you to go, to go ahead with it. That's not our rule, that's theirs. 
In this case, I threw in a, uh, uh, an example and said they bought the reefer truck because it was on sale and they had a good deal. We can't pay you. That's a mistake. It happened before the grant was approved. And one of the things you really need to be careful about, we've had uh, over the years, and certainly in the six years I've been involved with this, uh, we've had three or four where we couldn't pay for the project because the receipts came in marked before the approval. And in almost all cases, the person who made the mistake was somebody working on the project but did not take either the foundation qualification training or have any explanation like this. Uh, so they found something that's one I remember was backpacks and there was a good deal on them. So somebody on the committee working on this went out and bought them at the sale price. But that purchase occurred about a month before approval was received. We could not pay the club for the, uh, reimburse the club for the projects. The receipts are checked for the date by the review committee because they will also be checked by the audit committee. Put in a timeline for your project. What are you doing now? You can't purchase anything or do any of the actual work, but you can certainly plan and get your partners and look at where you're gonna buy the equipment. Uh, you can put in a better budget if you've already had quotes on what this is going to cost you and you figured out where to purchase it. When the project receives final, final approval, probably August for this uh, particular year, it goes into the Rotary Foundation and uh, we have to put in our uh, report from the current year before they will approve it. And then they say, you can tell your clubs to go ahead and start their projects. Uh, so they purchase the equipment here. And a, a timeline of when you expect to do it might not necessarily stick to that. And in this project, uh, you didn't stick to it. And I'll show you that later when you make your report and why you didn't stick to it. Uh, it was a supply chain issue. Uh, so you've got to uh, install the equipment, the training, testing, operation, put in your final report. Next tab is the budget tab. Okay. We have switched so that we use Canadian dollars only for district grants. There used to be quite a bit of confusion depending on where it was taking place. Uh, so now we stick to Canadian dollars only. But in the local amount, you put in what you use to buy it. And there could be a variety of things as there is in this particular one. Uh, in this case, they bought the enzyme from the United States and with tax, it costs $740. But then you convert that to Canadian dollars and uh, you can use the rotary exchange rate uh, you can get through it through my rotary in other ways, but actually the quickest way to go to get it, go into Google, just type in the search bar, Rotary International Exchange Rates. Click it and the page will come up and it'll have every month going back for a couple of years, I believe. Uh, and uh, just scroll down, find the currency you want. If the currency isn't there, uh, just go to Google and say, for example, the uh, Ghanaian, whatever it is, shilling, I think, to the Canadian dollar and use that uh, particular rate. Uh, in this case, they decided to uh, budgie charge right on the border of, uh, of Kenya in Tanzania. Uh, they decided they could get a better deal by going across the border into Kenya so they did this in Kenyan shillings in both the bottles and the reefer. Reefer is the refrigerated, uh, formerly a, a truck trailer, which is 
in this case, no longer roadworthy, but is still a good refrigeration unit. They did it in Kenyan shillings. They transferred it into Canadian dollars. They bought the dairy equipment in Europe and they transferred it into Canadian dollars. Two totals must be equal. Obviously, your income must be equal to your budget. Uh, and in this case, Bolton put in $1,000, Brampton put in 7,500 or committed that amount. And the district grant uh, will put in 6,500. That's the maximum. Uh, it's less than half of the total, but it is the maximum, 6,500 Canadian, uh, Canadian dollars. And we'll find the next tab now. Ah, documents. This can be the most annoying one for the committee, the documents tab, depending on how things are put in there. Uh, we've had grant reports where there's 40 items in the documents and they are all just a big long list, no sorting them out, no clear identification of what each document is. And, and that's a nightmare for the review committee. It's gonna delay the review, it's gonna delay you getting your money. And uh, it's a real nightmare for the uh, audit review committee because they haven't been sort of hands-on with the grant as it's been going on. So you can make a number of folders and I, I created these folders, they're not automatically in there. Uh, money transfer details, pictures of the projects, uh, et cetera. And you can add multiple at a time. And then for each one of these, uh, you can either add a single, and there it is, and you upload a file, and, and don't forget to click save after you've done it. Or much easier way to do it, if you're uh, either up here when you're creating the files, or if you're putting in a bunch of stuff in at the same time, add multiple. It, you can either add the files down on this uh, button or you can drag them here. The ones I put in the picture uh, folder, I just went into my pictures and I uh, dragged them in here and then I hit start upload. Then 10 seconds maybe it said all four files or whatever I put in there uh, were uploaded. We'll go back to the main page and we'll see what I've done there. In the pictures, I put four pictures and these are actual pictures of uh, when I was there. So I do look a little bit younger, it being about 21 years ago. But I point out here that this was a, a, a picture with an extension of .jpg. That means nothing to me. And I've seen a whole list of pictures and where people have put in, they've used their, uh, their smartphone, they've taken pictures of receipts, they have pictures that were from the project, uh, they uh, take pictures of the uh, money transfer details and the purchase quotes, and there's just a long list of JPG documents. Uh, make it a little easier and a little faster by just naming your files. So the that, was, that one was easy to figure out what it was, and that is the actual building that the agriculture cooperative uh, gave to install the dairy. And it, it got a paint job while we were there. I was up on a ladder painting this uh, eave trough up here at one point. And, but this one says absolutely nothing to me. Now, it happens to be a picture of me in the leper colony, which is... Uh, uh, adjacent to uh, Maji Chai and is actually where the milk comes for this project. But I wouldn't know that from what's listed here. So tell us, tell us what it is. Uh, these were the children in the, of the people in the leper colony. And uh, this is an interesting point. Happens quite often. Time expired uh, containers, shipping containers, get shipped over full of product, bedding, school supplies, whatever. And then they get used. And this is actually the school room there. Not very good uh, air conditioning in the summer. Okay, let's see what else I need on the documents tabs. Drag and drop, name the files. Okay, that covers that. The project overview. Now this, come on. 
Okay. Everything you put in previous to this is covered in project overview. You can't change this. That's why my notes are still here, uh, because there is no edit button. If you want to change it, you go back to where you put in your application and change it, save it, or update it, as the case may be, and this page will change. But as I said, there is a point where you can print the entire application. If you want to include the activity log, which is the last, excuse me, the last tab that we will discuss, uh, you just click that, you click print, and there is the entire application, the budget, the activity log, uh, the, the whole thing, which you can use to distribute to your club if you wish, or for whatever purpose. Go back to that page. And as I said, everything is in there. The description, the community assessment, the sustainability, the implementation, the expenses, the expected income, your partners, and the project activity log at the bottom. So we'll go to that now, to that tab. Uh, oh no, we'll go to the individual project report at this point. This is the one where I had the 30 minutes of work and then, uh, and then blew it and had to start all over again. Uh, so here's where you're going to describe the project. This is your project is finished now. With the documents tab, you may be putting things in on an ongoing basis. For example, uh, you get quotes for buying the equipment or buying the reefer. Uh, put them in when you get them. Uh, you transfer the money. Put it in when you do it. But this is project is complete. And now you're going to go ahead and give the final report to us so you can get your money. So describe the project, what was done, where, when, uh, uh, did the project activities take place? How many people benefited from this project? How many Rotarians participated in the project? What did they do? And if a cooperating organization is involved, in this case, the University of Arusha, they trained the dairy workers and they agreed to provide recurrent training in uh, best practices, uh, sanitation and, and, uh, and safety. Your financial report. In this example, I decided that they got a deal on the truck. And so it came in quite a bit lower than the original quote. The original quote for the truck was $8,000. It came in at five. So this project uh, expenses dropped to $12,000 uh, instead of the original 15,000. So now the amount that will be paid from the district grant funds is half of what was spent by the two clubs rather than the maximum of 6,500 that was previously. The two clubs spent $6,000. They upfronted that amount, uh, 12,000 for the project, and they don't get the six back until the project is complete and the report is filed. Uh, so they've spent uh, $6,000. We will send the rebate to the club of record, which in this case is the Rotary Club of Brampton. And it is up to the two clubs to determine uh, how the expense is broken down with the lesser expense and how much is rebated 50%, presumably. So in this case, uh, the uh, Rotary Club of Bolton would uh, end up getting $500 and the Rotary Club of Brampton would get uh, uh, oops, I did that wrong, would get a thousand and Rotary Club of Brampton would get 5,000 for the total of 6,000. See what else I've got here. Okay, that's the completion of the individual project report. And uh, when you're finished, you click submit. This uh, block up here, these change depending on the status of the grant at a particular time and uh, for example, if you're asked to uh, 
provide information, you'd put the information in and you'd click provide uh, information. We'll go to the activity log next. Activity log is everything that's done uh, using the grants module. In, in other words, everything that's done up here. So if we have a question, we will ask the question up here. Information requested will be one of the, uh, the items that we can uh, click on. And uh, we will ask you, you will get an email. Uh, this one I did yesterday when uh, Leslie and I were doing a run through for timing. And I said, are you there? When that happens, that goes to you, the, the principal person on your grant, but it also goes to the grants review committee. I got a couple of answers and said, yes, I am. Why are you asking? Uh, and it goes to me and it goes to Leslie and it goes to, uh, to Aldo. So we use this more than we would use uh, emails to ask you for an update or some additional information, particularly when you're filing your report and we say we need, for example, uh, the uh, detail on uh, transferring the currency, the, the money from uh, Canada to the project or proof of payment. And I should have mentioned earlier, it's mentioned in the notes that, uh, When we get down to payments and what you spent, an invoice is not a receipt. And we've said that a couple of times through this. Uh, an invoice is not a receipt unless it's marked paid. Uh, a receipt can be a, uh, a visa receipt, for example, that is a receipt. But also there's a requirement that there's proof shown that the money was actually sent. So for example, if the Rotary Club of Maru uh, had a receipt from uh, Arusha Trucking for uh, a reefer, you have to be able to show that you actually sent uh, some money to the Rotary Club of Maru to pay for that uh, Russia trucking. And that's, uh, that's a requirement of the audit review committee. That's the uh, end of my presentation. Uh, I will stop share and I'll hand this back to Leslie for questions. Hi, Leslie. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just uh, was trying to screen share and I've been keeping an eye on the uh, questions. So bear with me, this is what I was trying to do. <clears throat> Can you see? Yep, come That's, at the okay. stage, we make a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, <laughs> all right. So thank you, Norm. Um, and I know for people, if you haven't done this before, or even if you have, that was a lot of information. Um, there was a question actually that asked, uh, is this going to be available uh, on the website? We are hoping to put uh, the recorded version on the website because what Norm did was live. It wasn't on slides. So all of what Norm did was actually live in um, over internet. And, uh, but there are support um, materials new support materials that are actually and have recently been put in the documents page for district grants. So you've got far more resources than I think you've ever had um, to be able to fill in a district grant um, application and report. If you're absolutely stuck and you can't find the information, uh, then I'll give you again the email address um, to connect with. So a reminder, a common mistake, an invoice is not a receipt unless it's been marked paid. So no point sending us the invoice and with your final report because we can't accept that because the Rotary Foundation won't accept that. So uh, make sure that it is an actual receipt. 
uh, missing information, incorrect budget number, um, uh, you know, uh, source of income is less than the budget. So you don't have it, that balance. And Norm did mention that um, on the page that we were looking at. Sending receipts and reports to the committee instead of entering them into the grants module. You can send us a summary of your report, but we can't do anything with it. So at your final project report must be entered into the project module uh, on the district website. And Norm went over the areas that you really have to keep an eye on. Here's the email address. Uh, I did mention that. So those of you who came in a little later wouldn't have heard this. Um, but if you have any questions or all correspondence regarding your grant should go to this email address, foundation at rotary7080.org. The reason being that if one of us, if you send it to me and I'm not here, then nobody else knows you've asked the question and you're going to be running around trying to find who can answer this for me. If you send it to this email address, there are three people who get that email and we can make it more, um, but we're just saying, send it there and then we decide who's looking after it, who's responding to you. Everything that we've been doing, uh, I won't say just this year, but specifically this year with the support materials um, is to make sure that you have the support you need in order to do more district and global grants. We have funding. We want to make sure that funding is used. So, so please, we encourage you uh, and we're here to support you. And if there's other things that you need that we haven't provided, then just let us know. Um, FAQs, uh, we did this last year. This is another document that you'll find on the documents page in uh, the district website for foundation. All sorts of questions. I don't know uh, my username. I I've forgotten. I haven't used it for a while. Well, what do you do in order to get that? Because to ask me is not going to help or to send it to foundation is not going to help. Um, why can't I find the district grant application on the Rotary Foundation website? It's probably because you're in the My Rotary website, which is the wrong website. And we get this all the time. So again, I'm going to tell you district grant, district website, Canadian dollars. All right, global grant, Rotary International, global international, US dollars. OK, so just keep that in mind. And depending on the um, type of grant that you are wanting to um, implement. Uh, so that's it. Um, questions. And I'm just going to stop screen share right now. I don't see any other questions that have come up. So what I'm going to do is I see Rob with his hand up, Leslie. Oh, OK, thank you. Yes, uh, Rob. Let, yes, let's see. I have two questions. Mm. Uh, Norm, on the first page of the application, it says, uh, uh, I guess, the dollar amount. I it's saw your question, Rob, and the answer it is the total budget uh, for the project, not the amount you're expecting in the grant. Got it. OK, so that answers that. Uh, second question is, what's your timelines with our submission? Uh, let's say I go ahead, we submit by your March 15th. Um, when do you look at it? And when do we get your okay that we completed the, documentation, the documentation correctly? Meaning, do we get a call two weeks later to say, hey, Rob, uh, you missed uh, line item three. Uh, like, should or, or do we get an email to say we've got everything, we're ready to go now? We do our job. Like, can you outline that a little? More uh, likely than the email or the call. What you're <clears throat> going to get. Just a second. I have to turn this off. It's it's. Uh, 
Okay, it's it's one of those uh, stupid spam calls on my phone. You know, this one was from Mozambique. Uh, I could get them from all over. Uh, okay, what you'll most likely get, we will use that uh, block at the, that I was showing you where it said more information requested. Uh, that's one of the things that we can click. And that way the request is right on uh, the application and is stored in the uh, activity log. Uh, so you would get probably a message there that says uh, you, you didn't complete line three was the example that you used uh, and then you would answer and, and the answer would go on the activity log. How long that takes depends on how good a job you do on the application initially. Uh, right after the March 15th deadline, the review committee will start looking at them and uh, they look at them independently and they may have a Zoom call, probably will have a Zoom call uh, to discuss them and say, this one is fine. This one, we not sure what they mean here. And this one, we, uh, uh, we've got to get a lot more information or we're going to have to reject it. It doesn't fit the, uh, the, guide, the rotary guidelines. Uh, that can take, depending on what we have to ask for, that can take anywhere up to uh, June, but we uh, hope to complete that in uh, the rest of March and April. And then you will be told that yours is provisionally approved at district level, but do not start the project. We then fill out the spend plan uh, with just a simple description of what your project is, is about. We don't go into a lot of detail and we send it to the Rotary Foundation. Uh, when they approve this, uh, spend plan and we have submitted our final report for all the projects that are currently going on uh, they will notify us that the money is on the way and go ahead and uh, start your project uh, we get the money we submit it to them in us dollars you don't have to worry about that uh, and they then Put it back in our bank account at the Canadian dollar equivalent. So it's uh, it's a pretty seamless uh, process. Uh, go ahead, Leslie. Um, Norm, did we cover because I was also multitasking here with the the chat? Um, did we cover the idea of contingency in case, or because in global grants they can put in a contingency just to make sure we're clear. And, and you can put in a contingency. Uh, you can put in a contingency two ways. You can put it in as a line item in the budget, or you can estimate the price of something. And if it comes in under budget, that's the money, that's the number we use to reimburse you. But if it comes in on budget, so uh, if you're not sure of the price of the, what the reefer is going to uh, cost you, and uh, you decide that your submission is 5% more for contingency. The biggest contingency though is not the purchase price of items. The biggest contingency problem we run into is uh, some countries have rapidly fluctuating exchange rates. We ran into that where it, uh, the total amount on the grant was out by nearly $10,000 on a uh, one in South Africa. That was a global grant, not a district grant. Uh, there was the other question was asked uh, was uh, submitting do you submit the, uh, the payment in Canadian or US dollars? Uh, I answered that Norm, uh, Canadian, yeah I answered uh, Canadian for that. Can I just go over the questions that I uh, didn't answer and there was one from um, Diane, can a local club partners then see the project status of the project they are supporting if they go into the district grants module? No. And the reason for no is there's no place where we uh, fill in a fillable slot and click uh, enter. The listing of the local club that's supporting you is simply text that's added into the uh, grant application. Now, you can keep them informed uh, simply by going to that uh, overview page and uh, clicking on print and send the document to them. And you can print it in a PDF and save it yourself if you wish. But no, there's, uh, uh, it'd be nice if Club Runner had a place where we could put in their name and they could get reports, but there is no place. And getting Club Runner to change anything 
is not the easiest thing in the world. Yeah, and and we have tried um, over the years. We've said, you know, our district does this. Can we customize? Certain things we can customize. And Ingrid this year has done an awesome job on highlighting in red. Uh, and that was a suggestion from Club Runner because they couldn't um, uh, do what we asked them to do. So they said, well, you know, maybe put it in red, put it in bold, make it stand out. So do read those notes before you fill in that section um, of the application. Um, another question, again from Diane, could sustainability, this is when you were talking about the uh, sustainability segment norm, could su uh, sustainability, for example, one-off versus permanent impact, possibly affect the acceptance of a grant request? And the answer is no. It's it's nice information. It's, uh, it's certainly... Uh, gives us more to report when we're telling people about the projects we do. But if there is no sustainability, if it's a one-off, it has the exact same chance of getting approved as one that's sustainable. One thing that district grants are quite often used for is uh, a startup, a look at the project. And your intent is that provided this works out, that you are going to have longer term. Either you're going to continue to support it independently as a club, or in many cases, it's a it becomes a lead in to a future much larger global grant. Um, and there was uh, well, there were several others, but I think we've answered that. If we haven't, then I'll take open questions. Um, the last one was, will we be able to access a copy of this presentation subsequently? We are hoping to put the recording um, of this on the website simply because the PowerPoint is only the PowerPoints that I showed you. Um, and so it's, there's, there's not much there, but if the recording is there, uh, that could be helpful. You can see what Norm took you through, um, both for the application and the report. Again, I'm going to say there are numerous new resources uh, on the documents page. Please use those. They're there for you. They were designed to help you to make sure that um, you know how to put in a, a good application. I will tell you um, that last year was the first year that we ran this district grant webinar. We, prior to that, it was foundation qualification training, and that was it. What we found last year um, was that there were very few errors in the applications that were submitted. And the review committee was able to very quickly go through those, and we eliminated the backwards and forwards um, that we go through saying, sorry, we didn't receive this, or uh, we need this, or can you clarify this? Um, so we're trying to make it more effective for both you, um, those who submit applications, and for the committee, the review committee, who goes over those. One more thing I just want to mention is that last year, uh, let's back up a moment, the uh, Rotary Foundation does require every district to have their grants uh, reviewed and um, by an assessment committee. We created an assessment committee uh, last year and they did a complete review of all the district grants. One of the things that they did, um, uh, so one of the, the major recommendations was everything should be in Canadian dollars that is for a district grant. And that's why this year that has changed. Um, and there were other uh, things, putting a sample district grant report and application on the website. We've done that. It's there. Um, so we are following the recommendations of the also the assessment committee that wants to make sure that we are doing the things that we absolutely 
need to do. And all the different documents that you're going to see on the documents page are ones that we've done in excess of what we were asked to do. Um, so, so this is to help you. We want you to use the grant money. So if there's anything else you need or any other suggestions, we're open um, to those. Uh, Leslie, there's two quick things I'd like to cover, and I see Eric has a question, and I saw the written one from uh, Margaret. I'll, I'll answer Margaret's first. No, her question was, are there any administrative fees involved? And the answer is no. We are slave labor. Unlike uh, <laughs> when you do a global grant where you have, if you do it through <laughs> I know. RI, you put in 5%. Uh, no, we don't, uh, we don't charge anything. Uh, the other Thank thing you. I wanted to mention is because we are now putting the grant application in the year of submission, where in the past we put it in the following year, when you go in to look at your club grants, this year only, <clears throat> you may see the new one and the old one, the previous one, if you put in grants uh, applications in both years. Don't worry about it. That's for us to sort out. You're already doing the project this year. Uh, and we will keep track of, because we see the submission date, so it's pretty quick for us to tell which is a new grant, which is uh, an old one. Eric, you had a question? I do. Thank you. Uh, you can hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Um, it, it, thanks for, for all the information, Norm and, and Leslie. I know uh, it's the first time I've had to put, or I'm going to put an application in for our, our project, and uh, I imagine, I don't know what others are gonna do, but I'm gonna to have to do a few trial runs on, on, on an application to see where I'm going wrong. And uh, for, first question is, when I finish this, these trial applications or whatever, can I just push a button and eliminate the whole thing? Or do I have to go back and erase it all? No, at any point you can just click cancel. Okay. And if it is already being submitted, it will still- No, 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 I'm talking list. about- I'm talking about before anything is finalized and submitted to you. Uh, then you can just cancel the whole thing. Without having to go back and erase it all. Without having to go back and restart. You might, uh, you might want to print it first. So yeah. that if you're duplicating any information when you get ready to actually put it in, right. uh, you can cut and paste. Okay. And then uh, to me, I don't know about others, but it would be great for me if you you know, it's a great video, you know, a great session, and I can go back and look at the video whenever it's available, but I would love to have something that goes boom, 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 the first 10 or 15 things so that I know exactly where to go, exactly what to push, exactly how to follow this application through the process. That's, can you uh, put that together? That's one of the documents that I, uh, correct me, uh, Leslie, but I believe that's one of the documents that Ingrid has already posted in the document section uh, that Leslie showed you at the start of the presentation. And it's a step-by-step. -step, uh, <laughs> okay. I, I, uh, I just I have always, to find it now. <laughs> I always want to call those uh, uh, grant applications for dummies, but none of you are dummies. Yeah, that's, that's what I need. It's just a that's what I need, term. grant application for dummies. That, well, that's what we need. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to the process um, and I'm sure I'll have questions as I go. Rob's going to ask a question I had in my mind, right, Rob? This is right tied in with yours, Eric. Um, so if you start in, you don't do, you don't have to do a trial application. You can start right into the application, and there you've went through. There's four, five, six tabs to complete. Can I save and update? You made it very clear. Do that, Norm. Can I do that? Stop the application process and come back 24 hours later, a few days later, and complete the application process? Or do I have to do everything at once? I just need, you know how we've been caught time yeah. and time? Can you save and then come back? Once you click save or update, it's there unless you cancel. Got it. And okay. in fact, the sample one that I showed you, yeah, uh, the data in there was entered over, uh, probably be three different days over a period of a week and a half. In fact, the original start of that application, I put in in November and didn't finish it until yesterday. Perfect. So we're, we're working with another country and I think others probably are too. 
And so it's important to get in touch with them right away and say, look guys, do not spend a cent on this at all, right? Exactly. Uh, and, and don't change what the money was for. We had one that uh, uh, the, it was intended to put in water cisterns uh, and a water purification system. And uh, the actual pipelines and the digging, digging of the well was the responsibility of a Dutch club. They dropped out. So the uh, club working there uh, just transferred the money and, and dug the wells. And uh, TRF said, no, that wasn't approved. So make sure that they use the money. If, now, if you want to change it, and in that example I gave you where there was a, uh, a cost underrun on the, uh, below the budget, if you want to use that money for another part of the project or an add-on, that's potentially possible. First thing you do at foundation at rotary7080.org, you ask us. You don't do it until you get permission. Uh, if it's approved at the district level, Leslie will submit it to the Rotary Foundation. Rennie Ryling in uh, Evanston will say yes or no. If we, she says yes, which is most likely, I've never had a no. Uh, and uh, then we'll tell you and you can go ahead and spend the money. So, I, okay, I have another question related to money. Uh, if, if we, in our, our district submission or uh, grant application, uh, don't have all our funding in place. Uh, we have the money from our club. We have other sources of funds, but they but we haven't got actual confirmation uh, that that's there. What do we do about our shortfall? Like we let's say our budget is a hundred thousand, and we're short twenty thousand uh, dollars at the time we make this application by March fifteenth, and we we feel we've got feelers out to get more money. What do we do? We don't, unlike uh, the Rotary Foundation, when you're doing it with a global grant, where the a grant, the money will not be transferred to the, uh, to the partner, the, the host partner Rotary Club. You don't need a host partner. Uh, we don't administer the money. That's entirely up to you. And if you're short at any particular time, and instead of sending them 15,000 on this project, you send them 10,000 and we'll get the rest to you when we can. We're only interested at the end. What did you spend? What did you transfer? Uh, what did you include in your report? And what are the receipts? But we don't, uh, we don't handle your money. Uh, it's entirely up to you and whoever your cooperating partner is, if you have one. Yeah, I, I can see that, Norm. But what I was really asking is when we submit the district application, we have to show you our budget and where we're getting the money from. Right. Right. Okay, so if you never get that extra money that you were short, that's fine. When you submit your final report, you're going to show how much you spent, and that's what we're going to base the rebate on. Okay. Yeah. So we just, show, we just show there that potential shortfall, but uh, we're looking to get the, that money. Uh, if it's after June 15th, uh, we've already closed your grant, so you will never get uh, a rebate on the shortfall. But if we've already gotten the money, enough money to get a, a maximum district grant, then that's okay. what we're given, then we're okay. Then you're okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Eric, can I just clarify? You mentioned very big numbers. We don't yeah. often see those in district grants at all because the maximum we will be able to pay out is 6,500. Were you referring to a district grant or a global grant? It was just a red flag went off in my head. No, I'm referring to my district grant application, which I understood uh, we could get a maximum of $30,000 no. US equivalent. No, that's a global grant. That's a global grant. That's why it triggered a red flag when you said a hundred thousand. No, remember a that isn't what I that isn't what I was told two weeks ago by you, you people. Oh uh, yes, yeah, told I quite clearly that, that. Yeah. I was told quite clearly that you that um, the maximum available for a, a district grant was thirty thousand U.S. That's a global grant. US. No, I, I, global, no. 
I no, I appreciate I appreciate that. Okay. I know we have to have to go in Canadian. Let's say whatever. Yeah, but Eric, I forgot the PowerPoint here, and I can show you the slide that's very very clear that um, a global grant has a minimum project value of thirty thousand dollars. A minimum project value. Okay. Right. A district grant that we were talking about today has a minimum project value of two thousand, um, uh, well, four thousand, right, uh, Norm? Yeah, two thousand match. Two and two is for yeah. Right, and up to a match of six thousand five hundred. So they're very different. Remember, I keep saying district grant, district website, global grant, Rotary International. Um, so they're very different grants and the PowerPoint, I can, if you want to hang out afterwards, I will show you the slide that clearly tells you the difference between the two. Um, so, uh, and unless anyone else wants to see that, I can bring that up now. I just have to pull the PowerPoint. That's all. No, that's that's okay. Uh, I'll talk to Norm about it because it's obvious. It must be my misunderstanding. But anyway, we. I'll call you. I'll call you, Norm, to understand it better. Yeah, that's good. And I can bring up. I have the PowerPoint, and I can bring it up and uh, okay. show you the section of it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No, we're good. Rob. Right. You're Rob, you're on mute. You're on mute. Uh, when can we start the district grant application? As soon as you're qualified. As soon as we're qualified. So we'll get an email from you, for me. I'm just waiting for my partner to complete uh, what she's doing in the next day or so. Right. So then we get an email from you saying you can start or do we notify you or? Uh, when you're qualified, it, it, if you are not qualified, you can't get into the module. If you can get into the module, you're qualified. Got it. Got it. Good. And we won't be sending out emails, um, Rob, uh, but, but Norm just um, mentioned that you'll know you're qualified because you can get in. Got it. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.